Thank you for your presence in our midst. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Touch your people, Lord. Let them know that you are real. Lord, do that which only you can do. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are all welcome to day two of our of the January prophetic encounter. Uh, we are praying, we are fasting. If you're here for the first time, you're welcome. Uh, whatever platform you are on from around the world, please be expectant. Uh, yesterday, I gave everybody specific instruction to put beside them their expectations. So if you haven't done so yet, please write your expectation, what you are believing God for within these three days. We have one more day to go. Write your expectation and place it by you. And I believe that by the end of tonight's service and tomorrow, God will give you a testimony. God will give you a testimony. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for all the mighty testimonies he continues to give his people in this commission. What an awesome testimony of liftings, of breakthroughs, of, of promotions. It can only be God. It can only be God. It can only be God. Man. This is not the hand man. of man. This is the hand of God. Amen. This is not the hand of man. This is the hand of God. And Amen. to God alone be all the glory. And we thank God for that powerful testimony. We don't rejoice in the death of others. But sometimes God uses such situations to show us that we ought to be grateful. Amen. Oh, I've always said, ungrateful people shall never prosper. Ungrateful people shall never prosper. And we thank God that we have caught the importance of being grateful. Listen, the Bible says that what is it that we have that we have not received? The very air we are breathing, we didn't pray for it. We cannot pay for it. It is just by the mercies of God that we are all alive. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. The mercies of God. And we must never take such grace for granted. Mm -hmm. We must never be familiar with the things of God. Never be familiar. And I thank God that God is doing great and mighty things in the lives of his people. And I want us to be expectant because greater dimensions is what we have entered into. Man, we have Man. entered into an unusual dimension, and I know without any shadow of doubt that God is going to visit us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, uh, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to everyone that has just joined us. I can just see right now one of my 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 class prefects in in Bible school. One of my pastors, Pastor Jays, has just joined us. God bless you. Pastor Jays is the senior pastor of Wembley Christian Fellowship. Uh, we thank God for your life. And uh, we're excited for you to be here in Jesus' name. For everyone, everyone across the world, uh, we love you. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah Amen. chapter 60, verse 11, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And for information, I will be moving my face to my notes from time to time. It doesn't mean that I am not looking at you. I am looking at you. Amen. And Amen. So attentive to the word in Jesus' name. I read. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And we are blessed by the read, reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my message that I started yesterday titled, Arise and Shine. Arise and Shine. And this is part two. Yesterday, we looked at the importance of having a solid foundation for what God wants to do in our lives. Yesterday, we looked at the importance of making sure 
that for us as, as individual, as God's children to become fruitful, we have to remain planted or we have to remain connected to our source. We have to make sure that our root is firmly rooted downwards because if we are not firmly planted, then when the time comes and we are lifted up, unfortunately, it's just a matter of time will come down. And we read from uh, Luke chapter 6 from verse 46 to 49, where Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? And we looked at uh, two examples of one man who built on the sun and the one who dug deep and built on the solid rock. So it's important that for us to arise and become great this year in every area of our lives, we have to be anchored. We have to be anchored. It is so critical and so vital. And so the quick question we want to ask is what does it mean to arise? What does it mean to arise? To arise, three definitions, is to be, number one, to be established. To arise, number one, is to be established. Number two, to arise is to become powerful. Number two, to arise is to become powerful. Number three, to arise is to come on the scene and stand. Number three, to arise is to come on the scene. When I say scene, it's S-C-E-N-E, scene, like a state, to come on the stage and stand. That means People are waiting for your manifestation. And in the name of Jesus, I decree that you will arise this year in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. And two, two words we are looking at, two critical words we are looking at. The first one is to arise. The second one is to shine. So quick question we also want to ask is what does it mean to shine? What does it mean to shine? Three definitions. Number one, to shine is to become light. To shine is to become light. Now, that word to become light there means to be as bright as the sun. To be as bright as the sun. Number two, to shine is to become bright. To shine is to become bright. Number three, to shine is to be illuminated, is to be illuminated. And so if we combine both, that means God's desire for us in this season is to rise up into the place and the purpose for which we have been called. And in the name of Jesus, I want you to be expectant Every word that God is speaking to us from today through to tomorrow, from yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we will see a tangible manifestation of the word in our lives. Amen. Why? Because the word has not changed. It's the same word. The Bible says that, oh, Lord, forever, your word is settled. God's word is settled. God, God's word cannot fail. God's word has gone through test. It has been proven that God's word works. The word of God works. One of our pastors here many years ago, when he started coming into this church, um, you know, he didn't know anything. He didn't know a lot of things. And then we started teaching him line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little, here a little. And then one day, he said, Pastor, now I have caught it. The word works. My honest and utmost desire for all of us is to come to the place where the word of God will work in your life. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Because Amen. the same word that was in the mouth of God, the same word that worked in the mouth of God, the same word that worked in the mouth of Jesus, 
the same word that worked in the mouth of all the prophets, all the apostles, all the disciples are the same words that I am speaking to you. They are the same words. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Beloved, that which we have heard, that which we have seen, mm -hmm. that which we have handled, the word of life is what we preach to you. So the word works. And like I've always said, God's ultimate desire is that the word will become flesh in your life. And all you have to do is keep out the word. And when you keep out the word, like Jesus said, that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. They are spirits and they are life. If you can bank your entire life on God's word, I can guarantee you a great future. I can guarantee you that your future will flourish. I can guarantee you that your future will be great. Why? Because your attention is on the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Your attention is on the word. So the scripture we read in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, it says, arise, shine, for your light is come. Why must you arise and shine? Because your light is come. Your light is come. And so therefore you must arise. Arise and shine. It is your season to shine. It is your season to arise. Don't allow anything to put you down. Don't allow the systems of this world to put you down. For all the young ones on this in this commission, it is your season to arise. I see young men, young women in this commission very soon, the next five years, 10 years, the next five to 10 years, the next five to 10 years. I see young men, young, young teenagers, teenagers in this commission within the next five to ten years doing great exploits in the kingdom of God will become global giants doing Man. exploits in the name of Jesus Amen. in that I believe it so strongly I know without any shadow of doubt that many here right now in the next five to ten years will become more time billionaires Will become one of the Amen. greatest chief executives in the world. Some Amen. of them are going to become great politicians. Some of them are going to be influencing policies. Some Amen. of them are going to be owning banks. Some Amen. of them are going to be owning educational facilities. Amen. I believe it so strongly Amen. because the time for us to arise and shine has come. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So God says, arise, shine, for your light has come. Not your light is going to come. Your light has come. Now, one of the definitions that I gave you to arise is to come on the scene and stand. Mm. Come on the scene and stand. And when you go to an opera or a theater where they are performing, there is a spotlight. Mm. There is a spotlight that comes upon the lead performer or the lead singer. And I believe that in the realm of the spirit, that spotlight is coming upon you in Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your light has Glory. come. Glory. Amen. Your light has come. Glory. Your light Amen. has come. Amen. Nothing will overshadow Amen. you. Nothing will stop your yes, life. Lord. Nothing will stop you Glory. from arising Amen. in this season in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God says, Arise, Amen. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Ooh. The Amen. glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is a difference maker. Mm. Uh, I've told you time and time again that when I was growing up in the faith, I had one suit, one jacket, one trousers, and one shirt. And when I'm going to go to church, what I do is I'll lay it on the bed and I'll pray and I'll say, Father, let your glory come upon this. And when I go to church, friends will see me and say, Oh, you were wearing new suit last new suit last week. You are wearing another new suit today. It was the same one suit I was wearing. Same one suit. But when the glory of God came upon that suit, in their eyes, it was new every Sunday. I was wearing new suit every Sunday. Why? Because the glory of God is the difference maker. 
Amen. 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 And God is saying this glory has a reason. The glory of God is risen upon you. Amen. The glory of God is risen upon you. When Amen. Moses had an encounter with the glory of God, the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 18, and Moses cried, 33, verse 18, Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Lord, show me your glory. This year for you to arise and shine, you have to bask in the glory. You have to Amen. bask in the glory. You have to stay under the glory of God. You have to stay in the glory Amen. of God. And the Bible says that Amen. when the, when Moses had an encounter with the glory of God, guess what happened? Guess what happened? When he came down, the people could not look at his face. Why? Because of the power of the glory. Of the glory. Because of the magnitude of the glory. I tell you, when you operate and function in the glory of God, no witch can come near you. Amen. No witch Amen. can come near you. Amen. That Amen. which belongs to you will be given to you this year in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so listen to me. To manifest the glory of God in our year of manifestation, you have to arise and shine. Please write that down. To manifest the glory of God in our year of manifestation, you have to arise and shine. Please hear me. The arising and shining is your responsibility. You are the one who have to do the arising. James chapter 2 verse 26 tells us, that as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Are you following what I'm saying? So when you set your expectation, you must now work with God, believing that that expectation is going to come to pass. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the name which is above every other name, I decree upon you right now that the glory of God will shine upon you. Amen. I said the glory of God will shine upon you. Amen. Amen. And listen to me, listen to me. The glory of God is more powerful than any generational curse. No generational curse can stand the glory. No generational failings can stand the glory. No sickness can stand the glory. Cancer cannot stand the glory of God. HIV AIDS cannot stand the glory of God. COVID cannot stand the glory of God. So it's time for us to go for the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for us to go for the glory. And in the Amen. name of Jesus, I pray for you that the glory of God will overshadow you. Amen. I said the glory of God will overshadow you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. When the glory of God overshadows you, overshadow you, mm. what has not worked in your life before begins to work. Amen. What has not worked in your life before begins to work. That's why Moses said to God, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, if your glory doesn't go with us, please don't send me. Why? Because when the glory of God is with you, it is like God himself is with you. One thing God never Amen. shares with no one is his glory. That is why Amen. our heart desire this year, in the midst of everything that is happening, we pray and ask, Lord, let your glory overshadow me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Write this down. As children of light, our purpose is to function in life is to shine as children of light our purpose and function in life is to shine oh that's so powerful you see most of the time 
many believers don't know their purpose and their function. The moment you know for which purpose you have been born and for which area you are to function, that's it. Nothing can stop you. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Isn't that glorious? Jesus never said you are going to be the light. He said you are the light, not of London. You are not the light of India. You are not the light of UK. You are not the light of Zimbabwe. You are not the light of Afghanistan. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Amen. You Amen. are the light of the world. Amen. The light of the world is greater. The influence of the light of the world is greater than the light of a, a one geographical location. For instance, probably in your house, you use a, a, a hundred watts light or a 60 watts light. The influence of a 60 watts light is different from a hundred watts light. The influence of a floodlight is different from that of a 60 watt light. And so when Jesus says you are the light of the world, he's talking about global influence, global influence. Don't look at yourself as a small person. God has called you to be great in this world. Hallelujah. So Amen. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Oh, mm -hmm. glory. Yes. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That means nothing can hide you. Amen. Nothing Amen. can hide you. Glory. So long as you are connected to Jesus Christ, there is no force, there is no power in this world that can hide your destiny. Why? Amen. Because you are the light of the world. Glory. People might be plotting against you. They can't do anything about that because you are the light of the world. Your business is the light of the world. Your Amen. family is Amen. the light of the world. Your children are Amen. the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Glory Glory. To God. The time has come for us to rise up and take our place. And so Jesus went further to teach us how we should function or how we should use this light. In verse 15, Jesus said, it says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, on a lampstand that it may give light to all who are in the house. So basically what Jesus is saying is that don't, don't put your light under, under the table. Don't hide your light. Don't hide your light. Don't hide your purpose. Don't hide what God has called you for. Jesus said, when you light a candle, you put it on a candlestick or on a lamp stick or on a lamp stand. Why? So that it can give brighter light to everyone that is in the house, meaning that your light is greater than those that are around you. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Your light is greater than those that are around you, and they are looking up to you for you to arise and shine. Glory. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, you will arise and shine. Amen. In Amen. that workplace, you will arise and shine. Amen. In Amen. your school, you will arise and shine. Amen. In your career, Amen. you will arise and shine in yes. the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory. 16, listen to what Jesus Amen. said. Jesus said, therefore, what do you do with this light? Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, 16. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. What is Jesus implying? That when this light that you are being given tonight and tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to receive an anointing. That anointing will become a light for you to shine across the world. Amen. 
It will be our anointing, first prophetic anointing for the year. First prophetic mm. encounter anointing for the year. And mm. that Amen. anointing will cause you to shine brighter and brighter in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But the question we want to ask is how does this light shine brighter and brighter? Because there is nothing in God, listen to me, there is nothing that God does that remains the same. God is a progressive God. God is always moving. God is always doing exploits. God is always blessing his people. And so we have to understand that when this light uh, comes upon you, it is not for stagnation. Mm. Are you following me? The light doesn't position you in one place. But as a matter of fact, the light causes your glory or the glory of God upon you to increase stronger and stronger. So how does this happen? Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 14 to 19. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 14 to 19. It says, do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Verse 18, key verse. It says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun or the shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see Amen. what God wants your light to be like. Now, for your light to shine brighter, there are some things you have to avoid. You have to avoid from verse 14 to 17, those who are wicked, those who operate in wickedness. Now verse 19, look at verse 19. It says, but the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Hallelujah. Amen. All, Amen. all my life in all humility, I have never focused on wicked people. <laughs> I have never given my attention to wicked people. <laughs> and are there wicked people around us? Oh, yes. There are so many wicked people in the world. When you hear stories, you will know that there are so many wicked people in this world. Judas was one of Jesus' loyal disciples. All of a sudden, he became wicked. He went and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. But did you notice that Jesus never prayed against Judas? Did you notice that? Mm. But what happened? Judas went and hanged himself. There is no way darkness can overcome light. It can never happen. Mm. Just focus on the light. Are you following me? Don't focus on the wickedness of the wicked. Just focus on being the light. Just focus on being the light. Just keep shining. Keep arising. And I tell you, they can't dim your light. Hallelujah. Amen. I said they can't dim your light. Hallelujah. Amen. All you have to do is keep shining. Keep shining. Glory. Keep shining. Keep shining. Darkness has no power over light. Mm. Amen. Jesus puts it this way in John chapter 9, verse 9, John chapter 9, verse 5. Jesus said, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the light world. Of the world. <laughs> so <laughs> darkness cannot overpower light. It That's is right. not possible. It is impossible. 
Every time light shows up, darkness has to flee. Amen. Instant. So be light. Focus on being light this year. Somebody insults you, be light. Say, God bless you. Somebody tries to cheat you, bless them. It doesn't matter. They don't know that as a matter of fact, God is raising you up higher and higher. Oh, they, try, they, try to, they try to lie upon Daniel that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, this guy, this Daniel guy, Shadrach and Abednego, they are not following your protocols. They are not obeying your command. What happened? They continue being light. They continue praying. They continue mm-hmm. praising. They didn't mm-hmm. focus on the, 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 the enemies, the wickedness of the wicked. They mm-hmm. never focused on that. They focused on God. They focused on God. Psalm 34, verse 5. The Bible says that when we look up to him, those who look up to him are not ashamed and we become radiant. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You cannot look up to God Glory. and be ashamed. You cannot look up to God Amen. and be ashamed. The Bible says that when Stephen was Glory. being stoned, Stephen looked up and he saw Jesus standing. And his face became brighter and more brighter. Stop looking at men. Stop Mm. looking at what men are doing. Look Mm. up to Jesus. Glory. I said, look up to Jesus. Amen. I said, look up to Jesus. Amen. Point your children to look up to Jesus. Glory. Point your family to look up to Jesus. Amen. Point your business, look up to Jesus. And as you do that, the glory of God will be risen in your life. Oh, Lord, amen. Amen. Write this down. To arise, movement is required. To arise, movement is required. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. Moses said to the children of Israel, he said, you have scattered around this mountain long enough. Turn northward. So to arise, movement is required. Mm. You cannot say you want to arise and shine and still be at the same place, career-wise. Movement is required. Yes, God has blessed you. He's done great things with you in the past, but there are greater blessings ahead. Don't stick to the past. Are you following what I'm saying? So to arise, movement is required. Do something this year. Do something that will bring honor and glory to God's name. Pursue a a degree this year. Pursue a higher course in God this year. Go higher in God this year. This is not the time to go lower in God. This is the time to arise in God. This is the time to fast more. This is the time to pray more. This Mm. is the time to to fall in love with the Holy Spirit more and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to order your steps and to lead you. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. And so it's time to arise. Glory. I said it's time to arise. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, receive the grace. Thank receive you, the Jesus. enablement. Thank you, receive Lord. the Amen. empowerment Amen. to arise. Amen. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive the Thank grace. You, receive the Amen. enablement. Receive the anointing to arise and shine. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Write this down. Amen. Never allow challenging situations to keep you down. Never allow challenging situations to keep you down. Will you be challenged in life? Of course, yes. But never allow challenging situations to keep you down. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. It says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, when I fall. I will arise. Alleluia.
Yeah. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Glory, glory. Be to God. Amen. I said Amen. glory be to God. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you have fallen. I don't know where you have been challenged, but I prophesy Micah 7, 8 into your life. Amen. That Amen. anyone that is trying to rejoice over you because of the little challenge you had in the past, they will be disappointed. Amen. Amen. I said they will be disappointed. Amen. They will Amen. be put to shame in the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. So the Bible says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise do God. not rejoice Lord. over me, Praise my God. enemy. Mm. For when I fall, I will arise. I will arise. Amen. I will arise. Amen. I decree, men and women in this commission, all yeah. our global online members, I decree upon you, we will arise again. Amen. Say a good amen. 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 Shout a louder amen. Amen. I said we will arise again. Amen. I said we will arise again. Amen. He says, when I sit in darkness, when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Oh my God. The Lord Himself will be a light. Will mm -hmm. be a light, will be a mm -hmm. light to me. The Lord. sun will not be my light, the moon will not be Lord. my light, the EDF Lord. or British gas will not be my light. Uh of gem or whatever you use will not be my light. Mm. Whatever country you are from, whichever electricity company you use, they will not be your light, but no. God will be oh. your light. Amen. Amen. I said, Amen. God will be your light. Amen. Amen. God will be your light. Amen. Listen to me. God Thank cannot you. be your light and darkness overpower you. It is not possible. Mm. Not possible. God cannot be your light and darkness overpower you. Mm. You need to write that scripture boldly somewhere. Micah mm. 7, 8. And, and, and declare it every day prophetically mm. and mm. declare it every day Amen. declare it every day Amen. i will arise again Amen. i will arise again Amen. devil you thought you thought you thought i'm down now but come tomorrow oh god will lift me up higher Amen. i will exalt me up higher my horn will be exalted like that of a unicorn glory be to god i feel the anointing of god in this so strong there is a grace coming that is going to raise men and women in this commission to a point where men will marvel men will say how did this happen in the name of jesus glory be Somebody say with me, say this with me prophetically. Say, I will bounce back bigger, better, and more glorious. Say it like you have eaten tonight. I, I, will, will, bounce I will bounce back, back bigger, bigger, bigger and more glorious. glorious. Let it come from your spirit. Say, I will bounce back better, better. No, bigger, bigger, better, bigger, and more bigger. glorious. Amen. I will bounce back, bigger, 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 bigger more glorious. More glorious. Hallelujah. Any place I diminish. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. I'm bouncing back. Hallelujah. The spirit of bouncing back is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We are Thank bouncing you. back. Hallelujah. We are Amen. bouncing back. Amen. Bouncing back. Glory. Better and more glorious. Thank you, Jesus. If your enemies saw you, look at you and they say, uh, what's happening? Look at them and tell them in their face, 
I am bouncing back bigger, better, and more glorious. More glorious. Amen. Amen. Now, quickly as we get ready to close, quickly as we get ready to close, there are five stages I want you, I want to take you through. This is so critical. I want you to prepare your heart because this is so important. The Holy Spirit gave me the secret, deep insight into this. That for my people to arise and shine, you have to conquer these five stages. You have to conquer these five stages. So write it down. Five stages you must conquer before you can arise and shine. Five stages you must conquer before you can arise and shine. Number one is disappointment. Number one is disappointment. Luke chapter five, verse five. Luke chapter five, verse five. You know the story? Peter had told all night and caught nothing. Jesus came to him and said, launch out into the deep. And Peter said, master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will launch out the net into the deep. Now, toiling all night and catching nothing represents disappointment. I know without any shadow of doubt that many of us have gone through some form of disappointment in life, one way or the other. But listen, for you to arise and shine, you have to conquer this stage of disappointment. You have to conquer this stage of disappointment. It could be disappointments in relationship. It could be disappointments at work. It could be disappointments in your, in your, in your family. It could be disappointments in some form of investment you have made in life that has not yielded as you expected them to. But you have to learn to conquer disappointment. You have to learn to conquer disappointment. And how do you conquer disappointment? On the basis of God's word. I have told all mm-hmm. night. I failed yesterday. Nevertheless, at your word, I will launch out. Mm-hmm. It takes God's word to conquer disappointment. You know, David and his team, their, their city or their town was ransacked by the enemies. They came back. Everything was gone. The Bible says that David and the men wept. They wept till they had no strength in them to weep weep no more. Mm. But what happened? But the Bible says that, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, before he encouraged himself in the Lord, the Bible says that the people thought of stoning him. I'm sure David was disappointed. He thought, oh, I'm a failure. But he didn't allow that to push him down. Yes, you might be disappointed, but go write that CV again. Write that course again. Mm. Write a new contract. Pursue that degree again. Somebody broke your heart. Does it mean you can't give anyone your heart any longer? Are you following what I'm saying? It's time to arise. Arise out of disappointment. Many Christians have allowed disappointments to cripple the grace of God upon their lives. Yes, that marriage didn't work. And so what? It doesn't mean you are a failure. Yes, you might have your own issues, but don't allow those issues to destroy you, to beat you down. Glory be to God. It's time to overcome and to conquer disappointments. Number two stage you have to conquer is rejections. Number two is rejections. First Peter chapter two, verse four. First Peter chapter two, verse four. The Bible says that the stone rejected by men became the chief cornerstone. Even though it was rejected by men, it was chosen by God. Mm. rejected by men, but chosen by God. 
Don't allow man's rejection to cause you to think that you cannot arise and shine. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. yes. I have yes. gone through rejection. Now, what I have noticed with many people is that sometimes if you're not careful, rejection can cause you to lose self-esteem. Rejection can cause you to lose confidence in yourself and in the things of God. Jesus was rejected. The mother of Jesus, they didn't have no place to give birth to him. He had no room in the inn. He was rejected. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. So Jesus was rejected. Jesus blessed people, and the same people he blessed, the same people said, crucify him. Yes, I know you've helped people. I know you have blessed people, and they have rejected you. But that doesn't mean God has rejected you. Are you following what I'm saying? God has not rejected you. You made mistakes doesn't mean, yes, men have rejected you. Doesn't mean God has rejected you. At one point, my family, my dad rejected me. When I gave my life to Christ, my dad rejected me. He kicked me out of the house. He kicked me out of the house. I slept outside. Mosquitoes were feasting on me. But in the midst of that, I knew that God had chosen me. Mm -hmm. David's father rejected him. He was rejected. He was left by the sheep. He was not in the house. He was taking care of the sheep. But even though he was rejected by his family, God had chosen him. Mm -hmm. God had appointed him to be king over Israel. Don't allow the rejections of men for you to think that God has rejected you. No, God has not rejected you. God has Amen. not rejected you. Amen. God has not rejected you. Amen. Jesus was the stone that was rejected, but he became the chief cornerstone. He became the chief cornerstone. He became the chief cornerstone. God yes. has not rejected you. God, as a matter of fact, is waiting for you to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Rejected Glory. by men, but chosen by God. Say with me, I am chosen by God. I am chosen by God. Or oh, say like you many say, I am chosen by God. I am chosen by God. Number three. By God. The third, the third stage you have to conquer before you can arise and shine is defeat. Is defeat. First Corinthians chapter two. Verse 8. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Ghost is so strong in this service. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, listen. It says, Amen. Which None of the rulers of the age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> now, they didn't know that crucifying Jesus was, was his gateway to manifesting his glory. They thought crucifying Jesus, they were defeating him. It says, had they known. You see, what you are going through, the challenges you went through last year, the defeats you went through, if the devil had known that God will use those defeats as a springboard into your greatness, he won't put you through that. Mm -mm. Mm. He won't put you through that. So you have to conquer the stage of defeat. 
Yes, you were defeated yesterday. Doesn't mean you'll be defeated today. You remember the story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. Elijah prayed that there should not be rain for three and a half years and there was no rain. And then all of a sudden, Ahab changed his mind and all the bowels, all the evil was cleansed out of the town, the, the, the country. And Elijah went and prayed that there should be rain. And when he went and prayed, he told Elisha to go and check whether he can see uh, rain. He goes one, he saw nothing. He came, came back, he said, I see nothing. He goes again, nothing. Again, nothing. Again, nothing. He goes for about seven times. The seventh time when he came, he said, I see a cloud as little as a man's fist. Yes, you were defeated. Doesn't mean you shouldn't go again. Yes, you were defeated. You failed. Now, I've told you many times, I've prayed for people in this commission in all humility. All the glory goes to God. Who were believing God for driver's license. And they got a driver's license without doing theory or practical test here in the UK. Here in the UK, supernaturally. They got driver's license without doing theory test or practical test. Glory be to God. <laughs> but I went and I did my, my, my practical. Guess what? I failed the first time. <laughs> I prayed for people and they are getting driver's license without theory or practical test in the UK. It never happens in the UK. In the UK, it doesn't happen. It can only be by the hand of God. But I go, I fail. I, I don't think I feel. I feel because of my, my instructor. The instructor and the, and the examiner, they had, they had problem. They don't agree. So uh, when we went, he was sitting in the car. We went and we came back. The examiner said, failed. I didn't know that not to know if these two had a fight. They've had fights between them. So the second time when I went, I said, no, don't come with me. I'll go alone. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm, this time I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with God. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So, so I go alone and I come back and this time pass. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, I was defeated the first time. Doesn't mean I shouldn't go again. I went again. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. I cannot now say, um, I've prayed for people and uh, they didn't do theory or practicals and they got their driver's license. So in the name of Jesus, God, give me my driver's license now or else. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, Paul prays for people and immediately they are healed. But Paul said, there's a thorn in my flesh. And God said to him, he said he prayed many times, three times, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. The same Paul who was raising the dead, the same Paul that serpents bite and, and he doesn't die. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, Jesus was defeated. He was defeated on the cross, but he resurrected triumphantly on the third day. So don't allow defeats to keep you down. Don't mm -hmm. allow defeats in life to prevent you from arising and shining. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Number four, the fourth stage you have to conquer before you arise and shine is bitterness. Bitterness. Please write these things down because they are very important and I want you to go back and refer to them. Number four is bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. It says, be careful lest the grace of God becomes in vain and 
the root of bitterness spring up and trouble you. Let me read it. It says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Mm. Many become what? Defiled through what the root of bitterness. Mm. Don't be bitter. I've told you time and time again that in every animal that you know, apologies to to all animal rights people. <laughs> when 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 a sheep is slaughtered, there is a a part in that sheep that has a bile that is bitter. It has to be taken away carefully or else it will smudge into the meat and the whole mm. meat is defiled. The whole meat is contaminated. Listen, when you walk in bitterness, you cannot arise. Mm. When you walk in bitterness, you cannot shine. Nelson Mandela was put in prison for 27 years. Yes. He had the right to be bitter, but he was not bitter. He came out better. Amen. And the greatest yes. South Africa. Don't mm. be bitter. Bitterness is poison. Mm. Mm. Bitterness will destroy your destiny. Bitterness is not good. As a matter of fact, if you are bitter, the Holy Spirit cannot work in you. The Holy Spirit cannot work with you. If you are bitter towards people. Yes, I understand that that guy broke your heart. That lady broke your heart. I know he stole from you. I know she stole from you. I know they destroyed your business. I understand all of that. But don't be bitter. Don't be bitter. Bitterness no. chokes God's blessing from flowing in your life. Yes, that husband cheated. Cheated on you. Yes, that wife cheated on you. You did everything for him. You did everything for her. But she cheated. He cheated. But don't be bitter towards him or her. Because bitterness will prevent you from arising and shining. Last but not the least, the fifth one, the fifth stage you must conquer before you can arise and shine is unforgiveness. The stage of unforgiveness. Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, verse, sorry, verse 25 to 26. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you getting something out of this? Hallelujah. Yeah. Mark chapter 11, verse 26, 25 to 26. Listen to Jesus carefully. Listen to what Jesus is saying. This is Jesus speaking. Our Lord and Master Savior. The one whom we follow. The one whom we obey. Jesus said, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, notice Jesus didn't say, you must get the person to come and apologize before you forgive. Mm. Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive. Don't ask for reasons for which they did that against you. What did they not do to Jesus? They spat on him. Do you know what it means for somebody to spit on you? They slapped him. Do you know what it means for somebody you've, you've helped to, to spit on you and to slap you? 
they whipped him. 39 flesh coming from his back. Do you know what that means? He carried a heavy cross, painful, breaking his bones. Do you know what that it means? They nailed him to the cross. Do you know what that means? The pain, the agony he went through. Mm -hmm. Yet on the cross, they were laughing at him. They were laughing at him. And listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said to mm -hmm. them, Father, forgive them. For True. they know not what they are doing. Please forgive. Please forgive that brother. Please forgive that sister. Please forgive them. Please forgive. Husbands, forgive. Wives, forgive. Unforgiveness blocks the grace of God from flowing into your life. You can't be a wife. Your husband did something 10 years ago and you still remember. You are still nursing it. You have not forgiven. You say, oh, Pastor, uh, you can forgive, but you can't forget. No. If you have truly forgiven, you will truly forget. If you are truly forgiven, you will truly forget. Finally, as we close, all these five stages that I've shared with you, a great example is someone in the Bible called Joseph, which we all know. Joseph one day rose up and said he has a dream. And that was the beginning of his problem. <laughs> through that, he went through disappointments, disappointed by his own family. He went through rejections, rejected by his own family. He was defeated. He went through defeat by his own family. They ripped the coat of many colors from him and put him in the pit. That's the highest form of defeat. I'm sure Joseph was thinking, God, what about the vision you gave me? What about the dream you gave me? What happened? Defeated. Defeated. The next thing, they sold him into slavery. Joseph had the right to be bitter. Not only that, so sold him into slavery, got into Potiphar's house. All of a sudden, things were going good. And then Potiphar's wife brings trouble. And then the bitterness stage continues. He was pushed into prison for doing something for for. for, for he was in prison for, for not doing something. He was in prison for not doing what he was accused of doing. He had the right to be bitter, but Joseph didn't allow bitterness to imprison his future. The fifth stage is unforgiveness. When Joseph came out of the prison, after he interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh, he became the second in command. There were seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. When the seven years of famine came, everybody from the world came to Egypt. And guess what happened? They have to come to Joseph. His brothers came to him. And when Joseph saw them, at that point, Joseph had the power to crush them. He had the power to pay back. The power to tell them, Ah, you people disappointed me. You people rejected me. You people defeated me. You people made me bitter. Now I will not forgive you. They had the right. Joseph had the right to destroy them because he had all the power. But what happened? Joseph forgave them. Joseph forgave them. Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my good. What am I teaching you tonight? Church, if we are going to arise and shine, it's time to conquer these stages. The stage of disappointment, the stage of rejection, the stage of defeat, the stage of bitterness, and the stage of unforgiveness. If you can conquer these stages, 
nothing can stop you from arising and shining in this world. No one could stop Joseph. Did he rise or not? He rose. Everything they tried to do against him didn't work. He became the greatest. And at the end, his brothers truly bowed down to him. God's dream, God's vision came to pass. I've come to prophesy to someone tonight that in the name of Jesus, great grace to overcome all these five stages, to conquer all these five stages comes <laughs> upon you now. Man. I said in the name of Jesus, receive great grace. Great grace. Amen. Great grace. Amen. Great Amen. grace to conquer Amen. these five stages. Yes, Lord. To conquer these five stages. Amen. In the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And before we, if we come to the end of the service, before I pray for, I pray for everyone. If you are here on the Zoom service or you are watching live on YouTube, or you're watching life and you have not given your life to Jesus, I would like to pray for you. You have not given your life to Jesus. I would like to pray for you. I would like to pray for you. Let's all say this together. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you just as I am. I come, I come to, to you just as, as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name. Write my name in your book of life. In your book of life. May I serve you. May I serve you all the days of my life. All the days of my life. From today. From today. I decided. I decided to follow you. To follow you. No turning back. No, no back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 If you said that prayer, you are born again. You are a child of God. You are destined to make heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you receive Amen. that message? Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, I want us to pray into what we have heard so far. I want us to pray. I want you to open your mouth. You've heard the word. There is something God spoke, the Holy Spirit impressed upon your heart. There are things, you see, the word is like a mirror. We look into it. There are things that God doesn't want in us, and we begin to remove it. Amen. So Amen. now, begin to Amen. pray. Let's begin to pray. Begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Grace to do exploits. to do Grace to do exploit. I'm going to rise, Lord. I'm free to rise. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to rise. You are going to rise. In the name of Jesus, I Amen. Now, Amen. I like to pray for you. I like to pray for you. Amen. 
I'd like to pray Amen. for you. Father, in the name Amen. of Jesus, thank you for your sons and your daughters. Thank you for what you are doing in their lives. Let your hand continue to follow them all the Amen. days of their lives. Yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like to pray for you. Uh, Melvin, lift up your hands. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you. God says that you think where you are right now is, is, is an awesome place, but God says he's taking you to somewhere bigger and better than where you are now. Amen. Amen. Somewhere bigger and better. Bigger Amen. and better. You have not arrived. Amen. You have not arrived yet. Amen. Don't settle. Amen. Don't settle. Amen. God says, don't settle. There is more. There is more. God wants to do more with you. God says, believe him for bigger things. Amen. Don't Amen. limit him. God says, don't limit him. Be believe him for bigger things. Believe Amen. him for bigger things. In the Amen. name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to pray for you, Pastor Amen. Mayak. I'd like to pray for you. I sense, I sense uh, in the past you have gone through a lot of rejections, a lot of rejections from men. But God says, I should tell you, uh, he has not called you to please men, mm. but to please him, God. Thank you, Lord. God says, the rejections that you went through in the past, he was using it to frame you for the future. Amen. For what is ahead of you in the future. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray for you that in this season that you have come to, you will not miss God. Amen. You will not miss God. Amen. You will not miss God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Naima, I would like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you. Lift up your hands. I'd like to pray for you, Naima. In the name of Jesus. Is Naima there? I would like to pray for you. Lift up your hands and Amen. let me pray for you. Now, I, I'll go to Kim and then I'll come back. Kim, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I pray for a special grace upon you. A special grace. And that grace is going to cause you to walk in an unprecedented dimensions of God's glory. Amen. Amen. All unprecedented Amen. dimensions of God's glory. Amen. I sense so Amen. strongly Amen. that God is going to use you to change the story of your family. Amen. God is going to use Amen. you to change the story of your family. But Amen. one thing is key. God says you must be focused. Amen. You must be focused. Amen. Don't Amen. allow distractions. Be focused. Amen. Be focused. Amen. Be focused. Amen. God wants to do great things in your life. And God is going to really use you to, to make your family name great. Amen. To make your Amen. family name great. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin Amen. to pray. Let's begin to pray. Father, thank Father, thank now let's prepare our communion elements let's prepare our communion elements let's prepare our communion elements as we partake of the communion I sense strongly that this communion we are going to partake tonight uh, is, going to, is going to deal with deep-rooted pains, pain, physical 
pains in the lives of people, in your bodies, pain, constant pain, recurrent pains in some part of your body keeps coming. This communion will remove that generational pain for life. Oh, it will never happen again. Amen. It will never happen again. Amen. Amen. It will never happen again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we partake of the communion, I think Naima is writing out our light of prayer for you. Lift up your hands towards heaven. I want to pray for you that the blood of Jesus will cover you. Amen. No, no evil will come near you. Amen. No evil will come near you. Amen. Amen. Every evil Amen. eye, every evil eye yes. is rebuked now. In Jesus' name. I pray for you Amen. right now that you will not be a second class human being. Amen. First class human being. Amen. A first class human being. Amen. I pray that you understand what I'm telling you. Mm. I pray for you that you will understand what God is saying right now. God is saying that you must trust him. He's giving you more confidence. More Amen. Confidence. Amen. Amen. More confidence. Amen. To be bold, to be bold, to be yes. bold. Yes. Stand your ground. Amen. Love Jesus more than you have ever Amen. loved. Him. Amen. Let Amen. Jesus be your one. Love Jesus more than you have ever loved him. Don't feel Amen. shy to tell your friends about Jesus. Amen. 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 Don't shy to tell your friends about Jesus. Amen. Let them know that you belong to Jesus. Amen. 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 The body of Christ is blessed. It's important that we partake of it in a worthy manner. And remember, we cannot walk in unforgiveness and come to the table of the Lord. We have to let go before God can work in us. So the body of Christ is blessed. Take and eat. Amen. Amen. The same manner he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in the New Testament. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. As we partake of this communion, there will be no pain ever in your life ever again. Amen. No pain. Amen. No more pain. Amen. Amen. No more pain. Every Amen. pain in your Amen. joints, in your yes. marrow. Yes, the Bible Lord. says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So right now, surgery is taking place on your hip, Amen. on your back. Yes. Amen. Amen. Goes never to come again. Amen. On your wrist. That pain mm. goes never to come again. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive the healing of God. Amen. Receive the healing power of God. Amen. Jesus is healing you now. Amen. Ah, que vale brocha. It's a generational pain in the family. <laughs> right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, that pain on the knee goes never to come back again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every Amen. pain around Amen. your waist area. Amen. Waist area. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that pain never to come back In the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, take the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Father, we thank you. Let's begin to thank God for all the healings. Father, we thank you. Thank you for all your Jesus money. We give you praise. We give you praise. Amen. 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 Well, we thank God for what He's done. Hallelujah. I believe that God is giving everyone, both on the online. We're going to share our testimonies of God's goodness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, we are fasting and praying. Tomorrow is the last day. Tomorrow is the last day. Uh, all our prayer points will be on the church website, solutionchapel.org, www.solutionchapel.org, and go to the latest news page. The prayer points are there. Fasting without prayer is hunger strike. So please pray through the prayer points. We come in here at 6.30 p.m. Tomorrow is anointing and communion don't miss it so when you're coming before you sit down make sure you have your anointing and your communion by your side ready so that when it's time you don't get up and and go go to go and get your things in jesus name amen amen have you been blessed amen. tonight Yes, amen. 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 Amen.